Every day, around the clock, police officers are out protecting communities around the world, putting their lives on the line. In order to keep these officers safe, police departments equip their officers with ballistic vests that stop bullets from delivering a fatal injury in the line of duty. The National Institute of Justice estimates that 3,000 police lives have been saved by these ballistic vests in the past three decades. What is a ballistic vest? A ballistic vest is a piece of personal armor designed to dispel the impact of a bullet to lessen or even prevent injury. The NIJ has these classifications of armor. The ratings correspond to the bullets they can effectively stop. There really is no such thing as bulletproof armor, but rather bullet-resistant armor, as many bullets just have too much velocity or mass to be stoppable. This chart illustrates that there must be some limiting factors in designing a ballistic vest. Why would anyone choose a Type 2 vest over a Type 3A vest when the latter can stop more bullets? One key limiting factor is weight. Sure, it would be pretty easy to stop many bullets with a huge chunk of solid steel, but running after a fleeing criminal would be pretty difficult. Other properties of the vest that should be accounted for are flexibility and mobility. These two things are shown well here in this demonstration done by the Mythbusters Jamie Hindman and Adam Savage. How many pizzas does it take to attain something that is totally resistant to buckshot? And that's what we're about to answer. Call it random, but they pit 15 pizzas in five warmer packs against a nine pellet buckshot blast. And Jamie's getting a real taste for it. One. They unleash pure buckshot power. But did it make it through? Box number one. And what do you know? The buckshot cleared the crusts clean through to box number five. <laughs> it didn't make it through the back. Wait, we gotta open this up. Pizza number 14. Oh, it stopped. 14 pizzas. So it kind of worked. The buckshot stopped at pizza number 14. But would it sell as a bulletproof vest? <laughs> oh, check out my new bulletproof vest, man. Oh, you cannot mess with me. <laughs> as you can see, 15 pizzas might stop bullets, but will be very impractical as a tactical piece of body armor. The current, most widely accepted material for use in vests is polyparaphenylene terephthalamide, or PPT more commonly known by its brand name, Kevlar. First invented by Stephanie Kwolek in 1965 to create a better racing tire, Kevlar is a polymer that forms sheet-like molecules similar to silk. On a molecular level, Kevlar is formed through reaction of paraphenylene diamine and molten terephthaloyl chloride with N-methylpyrrolidone as reaction solvent. The process which makes the yellow fibers many of us are familiar with is also the process where it gains much of its strength and properties that make it such a good material for ballistic vests. This process is called wet spinning. In this fairly extensive procedure, all the polymer chains are arranged into a pneumatic state, or all facing the same direction, which gives a high elastic modulus and high tensile strength to the macroscopic Kevlar fiber. What makes Kevlar such an effective ballistic material? First, the interchains and super strong hydrogen bonding within its structure allow it to be stretched a long time without breaking. When woven, Kevlar fiber's tensile strength nears 3,620 megapascals. This combined with a relatively low weight gives Kevlar one of the highest tensile strength to weight ratios, five times that of steel. Another advantage of Kevlar is its resistance to cold and heat stress, as well as resistance to degradation by most chemicals. On the macroscopic level, Kevlar as a whole works like a net. Energy is dispersed throughout each tether so that the momentum of a fast-moving object can be stopped. The Kevlar interfaces itself so that the system as a whole absorbs an object's inertia, not just a few strands. As a result, a bullet's effect could be lessened from penetrating the body to only a bruise. For these reasons, it is not only used to protect police forces, but also to protect spacecraft. 
uh, impacts on the spacecraft can, are very violent, even impacts by very small particles. Imagine a pebble hitting the windshield of your car while you're traveling at over 30,000 miles per hour. If a small rock kicked loose from one of Pluto's moons were to hit New Horizons, it could compromise the entire mission. It could be game over. The scientists and engineers who worked on New Horizons took some precautionary measures, including equipping the spacecraft with a bulletproof vest. One thing that very few people appreciate is that inside the gold foil, the, the multi-layer insulation blankets that wrap New Horizons and help keep it warm, is a Kevlar layer, the same stuff that bulletproof vests are made of. It's designed to keep out micrometeoroids so that they don't pierce the spacecraft walls and get into the electronics or the fuel lines or the fuel tank or damage an instrument. Kevlar may have the power to protect a spaceship from debris, but it is far from a perfect material for ballistic vests. Some disadvantages of the material include a low compressive strength. The molecule strings stack on top of each other so they can be stretched well, but they are also very rigid. For this reason, we can't make skyscrapers out of Kevlar beams. Also, because of its high tensile strength, Kevlar is incredibly hard to cut during manufacturing. This stress strain curve for Kevlar and its biological inspiration spider silk shows another disadvantage of the material. Although it does have a very high tensile strength and a high Young's modulus, it does not have a high toughness. Kevlar can only be stretched less than 10% before it fractures. This can be a problem if the vest takes successive hits. Kevlar vests do not perform as well under these conditions. What will come next in the technology of ballistic vests? There's a lot of research being done with carbon nanotubes as the next body armor material. Much like Kevlar, they have a high modulus and a high tensile strength. Unlike Kevlar, however, they are much tougher and can be stretched roughly 16% without breaking. These could be the future of ballistic technology. The innovation of materials has been increasing exponentially as humankind modernizes and improves technology. Material science has only been advancing and will undoubtedly continue to improve and result in the development of useful and new materials. Ballistic armor was first developed when men used bows and crossbows in war, and utilized different materials to stop these projectiles from injuring the wearer. In modern days, bullets are the main projectile combatant will face, so the materials used in this type of armor and clothing must reflect this change to continue to protect their wearers. While Kevlar is currently the best solution for body armor, in the future, there undoubtedly will be different materials used in its place, and as every king or queen is found out, one can only rule for so long before someone or something else takes your place.